educate the parents and the kids and the church, and we all we all think about together and we kind of struggle. Before we get to that part, I had a question for you guys. This can be a show of hands. So kids, if you're if you're a child, I need your attention. I need your eyes. Is it harder? This, this one's for the kids, the next one's for the parents, okay? So kids, is it harder, this goes for teens too, is it harder to be a kid or a parent? Yes. Is it harder to be a kid than a parent? Do you agree? Kids? No? Nobody agrees. Parents, do you agree that it's harder to be a parent than it is to be a kid? <laughs> Alright. We're going to find out, let's take a look at this short clip real quick and find out which one is harder.
Let me ask you again, is it harder to be a parent or is it harder to be a child? <laughs> Some of those were uh, indefinitely parent-induced. Some of them were children-induced. Some of them were uh, pure accidents. So, uh, I just thought that we take a moment and let you think about which one of those is harder. Uh, the kids seem to get more injured than the parents did, but eh, you just never know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to read uh, the scripture that went along with, this, with the song we just sang prior to all this. And we're going to um, talk about what it means to be a family, what it means to be a parent, what it means to be a church to parents of kids. So, uh, let's, uh, this is coming out of Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, verse 1. These are the commands, decrees, and laws of the Lord of your God directed me to teach to you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all of his decrees and commands that I give to you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, Israel, be careful to obey, say that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord God of your ancestors promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them with symbols on your hands and bind them to your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you. A land with large, flourishing cities you did not build, houses full of all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Fear the Lord your God, serve Him only, and take your oaths in His name. This, uh, this set of verses structures almost the entirety of the Old Testament. Jesus comes back and says in multiple places, uh, Mark and Matthew, when he's asked by the Pharisees, what is the greatest law in all of the, law, uh, in all of the prophets and the law? So all of the Old Testament. So what is the greatest command? And Jesus comes back with this scripture and says, the love of the Lord your God, with our heart, with our soul, with our mind, and our strength. Uh, and then, then he says the second thing is just as good as the love your neighbor as yourself. But this verse, he, we tend to skip the back part of it where it says, Parents, impress these words upon your children. Teach them everything when you're lying down, when you're walking, when you're on your road. We had the opportunity to bless our kindergartners this morning and provide them uh, with Bibles as they enter kindergarten. And one of the things I told those parents this morning was, read your Bible to your kids in the morning, in the night. When, whenever you can, whenever you have a moment, teach your kids the Word of God. And so as parents, this is uh, something I'm learning. We've been a parent for uh, 19 months now. And it is not easy to make specific time to sit down and read a Bible. Now, my two you don't necessarily read like Scripture. We, we have storybook Bibles that we read. Uh, and we just now, after almost two years, have started consistently reading to him at night and going through a little story with Bible at night. And it's, it's hard to make that time to make sure that we impress these words upon these kids. So we try and do our best to act and to use our actions to be like Christ to use that impression as well. So right now, I'd like to take the time and introduce you to our new babies. So if you are on my list, you guys can come up here. It is the... Uh, Lisa and our family, the Kings, the Crosses, and then my own family have the four newspapers. Go and come up here.
So I'm going to introduce these guys by the uh, the oldest oldest first. So we're going to start with uh, Mr. Dawson Feliciano. We got some pictures up here showing as well. Uh, Dawson is the son of Jasmine and David Feliciano, with three lovely siblings. <laughs> they have uh, been a part of this congregation for some time now. And uh, they got to be a part of Breakfast and Bibles this morning, so they've been here since like 8 o'clock, so they've had a really long day today. Um, <laughs> but this is Dawson Feliciano, and he's just passed out. He is our oldest kid who will be one, I think, two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, next, after that, we have Miss Brooklyn King, the daughter of Mandy and Robert. I know. Uh, she's got two older siblings. Uh, they've also been a part of our congregation. And they live right down the street from us, so we've had the opportunity to spend quite a bit of time with this group, uh, and we're so thankful to have them. After that, we have Joshua Cross. He is the first boy of this family of girls, and that is uh, Latasha <laughs> and Drew Cross, our new parents here. And he's he's so fun. I'm just excited to have him. <laughs> And then last but not least is, um, I was going to say the newest member, but then Amanda Anderson had to have a baby or something. <laughs> that was probably the newest one. But then this is my daughter, Ms. I, and she is our second, and her little brother, Asher. So we're happy to have been a part of this congregation for about a year now. <laughs> so what I want to talk to you guys about is it's hard to go and think, all right, I've got 18 years with these kids before they go off and journey out. How do I impact them on a level that is going to make them Christ followers by the time by the time they leave? It's hard. It's something that it's can you it's can you comprehend the next 18 years and what they're going to look like? You don't know twists and turns. Uh, there's some families that move every couple months, every couple of years. Some that stay there forever, and it's just hard to tell. What it's like. So, we're going to try and help you guys. So, I'm giving you two jars here. One is full of pennies, and the other is completely empty. Okay. Each family is going to get two jars, and the jar of pennies feels kind of heavy, right? Patrick, can we get some of the in that jar? <laughs> there are 936 pennies in that jar. 936 is the number of weeks between 0 and 18. So, with these pennies, with, this, with these jars, as you go about your life, as you go about day to day, Every, you do it on Sunday, you do it on Monday, you do whatever is, is good for your family. But every week, you move a penny. And that is a week from your child's life until they turn 18. And as you move that penny, each time you do that, each week as you take this penny, you move it across and you go a week further in time, a week further in your child's life, the thought that I want you to have is how can I impact my child? How did I impact my child this week? And how can I do it next week? How can I constantly be teaching my child to follow Christ? And with each penny we move, uh, there's, there's a little sadness and a little joy at the same time. As you can say, I did this this week to impact my child's life, and I can do this next week. And that's the joy, and then there's a little bit of sadness, you know, I'm that much closer to than being grown and old and out. Um, I don't know what that feels like for them to be grown and old and out, but I know that I love this little guy. He keeps getting bigger and bigger, and it, like, can you just stop just for a second? And just sit still for a minute. Uh, maybe I can enjoy it a little bit longer. So, uh, I want each and every one of you guys to have those, take those, and I want you to take it one week at a time. Impress the words of God on your children one week at a time. And so, to start that, I have these for you. These are Jesus storybook tiles. They're short, they're these little stories that you can do one at a time, once a night, once a week, whatever works for your family, whatever makes it easiest 
on your family. So, I'm going to give these to you guys as well. So as we go forward, here's a starting point. Some of you may already do this. All of you have older children. Um, so you may already have a system. Use that. Do what, do what is best for your family. But to start, to take your kids and make them Christ followers, here is a reminder each week and a Bible to give them stories that you read them. So um, now I have a couple of vows. This is between us as families, as parents, and between you guys as the church. So there will be some words up on screen. Church, if y'all will stand, and if you will say with me. And I, I want you to be I want Church, I want you to be as serious as you can be at this moment. You are taking a vow to help these families along the way. To take them forward. And when their kid is sitting here screaming in the middle of church and Scott's up here talking and you don't want to hear it so you're letting the kids scream anyways. No, I mean, uh, when you want to hear it, you take your kids out. You're that person to help them. If you know these families, if you don't know these families, kids can be hard. And they need your help. So in all seriousness, as you say these words, if you agree to help these families, keep that on your heart, keep that on your mind as we go forward. So... Children are a gift from our Heavenly Father, and so birth is an occasion to celebrate and to reflect God's goodness. God has entrusted you with a magnificent gift and a tremendous responsibility. Parents, what is your response? We you got it behind you or in front of you. Church, what do you respond? We will help you. Scripture commands you as parents to teach your children about the Lord Jesus Christ. Only then will they be adequately equipped for the challenges of life and sufficiently prepared to meet the Lord when He returns. But your children's spiritual welfare will not be accomplished by simply telling them about Jesus. It is the words you speak combined with the obvious presence of the Holy Spirit in your lives that will effectively communicate the message of God's love and the saving power to your children. You must be committed to you must be committed to a greater resolve to let Christ shine through you by being even more intentional in your pursuit of holiness and the supremacy of God in your home. Parents, what is your response? Church. We will you. As a church, we are all part of the family of God. As a family, we need to work alongside these parents in efforts to teach the love of Christ to their children. We are not merely spectators. We must rise to the challenge of being brothers and sisters in Christ and exhibit godly characteristics. We must provide continuity in what is being taught at home and what is being seen in the church. Church, what is your response? We are family. We are committed. As a family, we must be willing to hold one another accountable and confront one another when necessary in order that the purity and integrity of our commitments is maintained. You have heard the parents state their committed commitment to being Christ-like for the sake of their children, but you now acknowledge their commitment and indicate your willingness to help them keep their promise. Church, what is your response? We are witnesses and we are committed. Parents, you've heard it. The church has said they are committed to your family. They are committed to helping you follow the steps of Christ and teach your children in those same footsteps. So as you go, as you continue throughout the week, I pray that the Lord is with you and that the church is with you in the same way and helping your kids. Y'all have